This is my uh, whole home uh, generator setup that I have in case there's a power outage. And my uh, inlet box right here. Just plug the generator cord into here. Have the uh, ground neutral and the two hot leads, which are 180 degrees out of phase. That gets me my 220 volts. Neutral goes to the neutral bar in here. The ground goes to the ground bus bar. And then that, of course, is bonded here in the breaker panel. And then I have this uh, 30 amp breaker that the two uh, 120 volt leads go to. And then have this interlock switch, or interlock installed that prevents me from turning this breaker on accidentally if the utility power is on. So that way there, uh, you can't back feed power into the electrical grid and uh, try to power the whole neighborhood and uh, potentially uh, shock a line them in that, that's trying to repair the power lines. And then uh, when you turn this off, you can lift up on this and then turn the uh, 30 amp breaker on for the generator, but then you can't turn the, the main back on. So it prevents this outlet right here from ever being live unless the uh, generator's going through it and it prevents the utility power from going through it. So just a safety device, it's, it's required under electrical codes. I mean, you can have, have it without that, but uh, you would uh, be breaking laws doing that. And uh, you know, it's just better to spend the extra money for this. Unfortunately, these things are way overpriced. I mean, they should just cost a few dollars, but they can cost 30 plus dollars. I ended up getting this one for I think around like $25, so it wasn't too bad, but it was still way overpriced. So, when there's a power outage, what I do is I hook up this generator right here. It's a Champion 10,000 watt peak, 8,000 watt a continuous, or on propane, it's 7,250 continuous and then uh, 9,025 peak. So peak is just brief uh, burst of higher wattage, like when something starts up. The uh, continuous is what uh, the generator can constantly put out. And it's a little less on propane because propane's not, doesn't have quite the, as high of, I guess you could say octane as gasoline has. But, uh, Propane is just burns cleaner. It's, uh, it's easier to hook up and you're less likely to have problems with the carburetor uh, getting fouled up, things like that. So the uh, propane is the default. So, you know, most of the time power outage is only gonna be a few hours. So just hook one of these up. And uh, one of these at 50% load will last about five, six, five, six hours. And um, of course, uh, you're probably not even going to be running that much so uh, one of these could potentially last you all day assuming you didn't run the generator constantly and then uh, I do have gasoline on standby as well so what I do with this is I add fuel stabilizer and uh, fill them up and then I rotate it once a year in my car but uh, that is just if there's a power outage that's longer where uh, my three propane tanks, um, where I run out of fuel on my propane tanks. Uh, Cost-wise, gasoline right now is going to be cheaper, but when gasoline is, you know, three plus dollars a, a gallon, it's about the same. So uh, what we do is hook the propane tank up. That's the regulator right there, and then uh, fire it up, and then. Uh, Make sure that breaker is off and then uh, hook this cord up to that interlock or that uh, inlet on the to the left of the breaker box and then uh, just turn the main on and then uh, turn that breaker on right there and then the uh, whole house is going to be powered so uh, let's 
some videos uh, what people will do is they'll turn all these breakers off before they turn this on and then they'll turn them on one at a time I don't mess with that I just turn everything on at once because uh, the air conditioner has a uh, a Emerson sure switch so there's a um, I think a five minute delay before it'll come on plus the thermostat when the thermostat comes on there's a five minute delay so no way the air conditioner can come on sooner and then uh, my fridge I put a a surge protector on there that also has a three minute off time so the fridge is going to come on three minutes after the power is restored so other than that I mean there's nothing that's going to come on and really surge it so uh, so I just hook it up turn the power on and then uh, good to go now one problem I did have was the air conditioner was starting but it was causing the lights to go completely out and then uh, there's real loud humming noise when it would come back on. So the generator just didn't have quite enough power. So what I did is I installed this train OEM hard start kit. That's it right there. So what that does is that just gives it an extra boost when the compressor starts and this potential relay detects once the compressor is about at 80% and then takes the capacitor out of line. So it's lowered the uh, starting amps from about 58 amps down to about 15, 20 amps. You know, it, it varies depending on, uh, you know, sometimes it'll be 20, sometimes it'll be around 15, but the lights still dim, you know, real suddenly, but it, they don't go completely out and air conditioner starts real smoothly. So we're good to go and then uh, I have uh, all gas in the house, so I can use my gas dryer, I can use gas stove, gas water heater, and then gas uh, furnace, so I can power the entire house with this generator, no problem at all. Now, of course, uh, you don't want to have, you know, the microwave, toaster, coffee pot, the washing dishes, you know, with the dishwasher, and you get too carried away with it, but... Um, I can use about up to about 7,000 uh, watts and be okay with that breaker um, most of the time you know, like even this air conditioner this train uh, I'm getting about 18 sear with this train so it's uh, this train in first stage only draws about 1500 watts 1600 watts and in second stage about 1800 something like that so You'll see a lot of videos out there where people say that, uh, you know, they can't power their whole house with the generator or they'll just have a smaller generator to power a few circuits. But, you know, the thing is, is, uh, here, and I'll show you. This is the generator I had before. It's a Champion uh, 4000 watt. And uh, I just had it for uh, four circuits. Here, I'll show you. So I bought this thing right here. This thing was like 200 bucks. And then uh, the generator, um, i trying to remember how much I paid for the generator, but I think it was like five, 500 bucks, something like that. And uh, it was fine, but I couldn't power my air conditioner. And then uh, this one here, and I'm getting ready to get rid of both of these generators, by the way. I just never got rid of it, but I had this one here that I used during Hurricane Ike. And uh, I was able to use the microwave, I was able to use the, the stove, you know, like the, the oven part of the stove, the refrigerator, but I had to keep on plugging things, plugging them back in. And uh, it was just a, a real big pain. And this thing was freaking loud anyway, almost as loud as this one. I mean, this thing is extremely loud, but um, this one was actually louder than that uh, Champion that I had. Yeah, I know my garage is a mess. That's another thing I'm gonna be cleaning up. But, um, but yeah, I mean, this one got me by, but after Hurricane Ike, I, I was like, well, I'll just do four circuits. And then I bought a portable air conditioner. But uh, I just decided, you know, might as well just power the whole house. And uh, for everything, the inter interlock, the inlet box, and uh, this generator and this cord, I mean, it was under $2,000. So it wasn't bad at all. 
So if you want to power your whole house with a generator, at least most of it, I know if you have all electric, if you have uh, a well, if you have uh, electric heat, electric um, water heater, I mean, I know it's going to be more, uh, you're going to need a bigger generator, but my philosophy is just do it once, do it right. And uh, I wish just from the beginning, you know, I would have gotten something like this, but fortunately I didn't have the money <laughs> back then to get this. But um, some people get the whole home generators that uh, that power the entire house. Um, the Generax and whatnot, Briggs and Stratton. There's some other ones, Cummings. Um, those are cool, but they're way overpriced. I mean, you're talking like four or 5,000 just for the generator. And then these places that install them like charge ridiculous amount of money for them. And um, if you do get one of those, I would see about installing it yourself or try to find someone, you know, that can install it for you. Don't don't go directly through those companies because it's going to be ridiculous. And we don't have enough power outages to justify that. And this house that I live in is not that big and it's just not worth that kind of money. When I get my next house, I probably am going to invest in that because I plan on moving to the country, which uh, power in the country a lot of times is not as reliable. So I'll probably get like a 300 gallon propane tank and then uh, get some kind of whole home um, automatic transfer system. But I'm not worried about it for right now. I'm gonna be in this house for, for a while. But it's just uh, just good to know that something happens that uh, I'll be able to uh, have power, you know, for several days, be able to power everything. So. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the uh, comment section. And I'm also going to be posting another video that's going to show this generator running and uh, it powering the whole house. Thanks for watching.